Today was my daughter's first day of first grade, so I was really excited for her. Um, and it brought up a lot of feelings all, all summer leading up to this. She was not really sure about um, going to a new school, starting first grade, and she was even refusing at some points to even go. But today she woke up and told me that she wasn't scared and she was feeling brave, and then she skipped to school like a pro. So I can assure you that it was not like this in preschool or first grade when she wasn't quite ready to make that separation from me. So for us today, it was a really big milestone. It was also her first day in an all-day learning environment where she's going to be away all day and had more of an academic focus instead of a play-based focus. So I knew that this was going to be a really big transition for her. And many of you are probably experiencing the first day of school big transitions. Um, many of our kids experience lots of big feelings around these kinds of firsts, um, whether it be the first day of preschool, kindergarten, middle school, or even high school, it can produce a lot of anxiety or nervousness or just some hesitancy with our children. So I wanted to do today's video blog about how to acknowledge our kids' feelings with some compassionate communication or nonviolent communication, NBC, as it's also known by. Um, and I realized that I could have just as easily fallen into um, the trap of habitual speech where I want to deny or discount or even just evaluate or judge or, or sort of offer opinions or advice to my daughter instead of um, focusing on her feelings and just doing what she needed me to do, which was listen. Um, as parents, we can be tempted to use language like, you'll be fine, don't worry, don't worry about it, it's going to be great. Um, you're a big girl now, or, or look at all the other kids, they're, they're ready to go, they're not holding on to their moms, or um, even for other, you know, older children, you'll be fine, you always make friends really easily. And instead of appreciating and communicating um, with our kids about how they're feeling, we sort of deny or discount what might be real for them. It's in with honorable intentions. We want to support our kids. We want them to know that we know it's going to be okay because usually, you know, we know that they can make it through. But what that does is it sort of discounts their real experience. And that can cause us, you know, that can cause separation and, and build that wall that we want to avoid, especially in communicating with our kids. Um, little kids just need to be validated in their feelings. I know this is scary for you. You're really, you're anxious about staying here in, in kindergarten. You don't know anyone. You wish that I could stay. You don't want me to leave. And then just letting them feel their feelings. They know that you're there, that you're supporting them, and that they that you hear them. You don't need to convince them that it's going to be okay or try to rationalize their experience for them. Um, just recognizing it. Even um, with older kids, they may just be needing some reassurance. Um, so saying things like, I'm wondering if you're just needing some, some reassurance that, that you're going to be okay or that I'm going to come back. It's not that they want you to tell them that they're going to be okay, but they want you to acknowledge what they were needing, the reassurance or just some positive attention focused on, again, their experience of what is happening. And this approach really invites our children to share their world with us because we're curious and we're inquisitive and we're not just giving, you know, placing our assumptions, our, our judgments, opinions, evaluations, uh, diagnosing the situation or giving our interpretation of what we think is going on. Um, even on the flip side, when kids return home from this, the big first day of school or whatever transition may be going on for you, we may be really excited to share, to share our experience of what happened. So um, we may want to say things like, I knew you could do it, or, you know, congratulations, you're so brave, you're the bravest kid I know, or um, I'm so proud of you, or bombard them with questions about how was your day, did you make any new friends? This can overwhelm our children with our expectations and opinions and and. Um, our ideas about their experience instead of actually finding out about how, what really happened for them and how they perceived it. It may be completely and totally different um, for them. And it's not that I don't want you to share your experience with your children. It's just that they tend to be more open if we first honor what was going on for them, what was really real for them. Um, so instead of saying, I knew you could do it, just simply saying you did it is a great way to acknowledge the child's experience um, or, or something like, I know you were feeling anxious about your first day and you should feel really proud of yourself. You did it, you made it through. Instead of telling them how proud we are of them, I'm so proud of you, let them know that they should be proud of themselves. This gives them the um, the strength to try again, the knowledge and the, the self-knowledge and the, um, the self-awareness to know that they can handle situations on their own. Um, 
or something like, I know it wasn't easy for you that, um, but you should feel really, a, really good about yourself, about you know, trying something new, or I imagine that it's difficult to make friends at a new school, but it, it looks like you found your courage and you did it. Again, acknowledging their experience of what might happen, um, of what may have happened. Sometimes we don't need to say anything at all. Sometimes our nonverbal language is, is enough to express our willingness to receive um, what our children have to share with us. And, and that makes them feel safe enough to feel heard. And we know that when they feel heard, they feel validated and um, they're more likely to willingly contribute and cooperate all those long-term goals that we have for our kids. Another thing that this language does is um, we can avoid the, the how is school fine, that one word, pat, answer that that can also become a habit so it's a habit that's hard to break if we don't actually orient our language around um, communicating about feelings and needs with our kids then you know we can go ahead and make assumptions about their experience and again it, instead of showing support for what's going on they can they can feel discounted or denied or, or maybe less likely to share their experience because it doesn't match up with what we're saying um, we think that happened um, another thing is that when we praise our kids it, look at why we're praising them. Are we praising them because we want that behavior to repeat? You know, that we want them to go off to school. You did such a good job and you're so brave. Is that because we want them to um, go to school tomorrow without any issue? Or is it because we're really acknowledging um, their bravery and their courage that it that it took them to, to make that jump, to make that, um, you know, to take that step and achieve that milestone? Um, so if you want to learn more about communicating from the heart, you can join me tomorrow. My online live online class starts, or you can always visit the website where there's lots of free goodies. There's a PDF download of an ebook and a free e-course, all kinds of things. So until next time, I'll see you guys on the Facebook page. Take care.